Next question is from Blower18. How can you know how good your muscle building genes are? Wrist, ankle, and neck measurements? And what would be a good measurements as opposed to bad? Okay, there's so many. I've heard of this now. Like how how accurate? Okay, so are. so there's okay. So they did some, and I can't remember the site, but they did some calculations of you know what they believe to be some of the best natural bodybuilders of all time, and what their top measurements were, and then they correlated them to their wrist. Uh, ankle, um, I think wrist and ankle measurement, or wrist, ankle, and waist, or, or, and yeah, or something like that. that. Too, yeah. And then they said, okay, this is the, based off of these people, this would be your upper genetic limit to how much muscle you could build. Now, here's why that's super general. There's so many factors that go into mm -hmm. your ability to build muscle. For example, I'll give you one example, right? So one might say your testosterone level. Uh, it might play a role in how much muscle you can build. Well, they might just did, it, play well, a role. Well, they just did a study. Um, that's why I said that. <laughs> it does play a role, but here's here's why it's not that easy. Okay, they just did a study that showed that uh, testosterone levels didn't play uh, that big of a role in how much muscle two groups of men built. What played a bigger role was androgen receptor density. The androgen receptors are what testosterone attached to. So, in other words, if you have six hundred. If your testosterone measures at 600, but you have incredible yeah. androgen density, you got nowhere to park them. It, it, well, no, you have great <laughs> androgen density, right, and right. someone else has 900 testosterone, but their androgen density is terrible. The 600 might actually be more uh, impactful on muscle building. So there's hormone levels, there's androgen density, there's muscle fiber uh, breakdown and density. There's myostatin. Myostatin's a thing that we learned about over the last 10 years that, you know, controls muscle. And you turn that switch off and the body just builds tons of muscle. There's muscle, you know, uh, fi uh, belly length. And there's so many factors. It's, it's very, yeah. I mean, could I look at someone just without working out and say that they probably can Be build predictive with it? Yeah, somewhat. But sometimes I can't. Like, well, I've known people who were, you'd look at and you'd think, oh, that's, a, that's an ectomorph. I've known this in gyms. Mm -hmm. And then they work out and they just build muscle so easily well, and you're like whoa i, I yeah, wouldn't have i just that. feel like this is always the case with the fitness industry is trying to uh you know catalog all of this and try and simplify everything so you could uh basically you could you could have these general standards so where mm -hmm. do i fit and then that way you can get marketed to and like right. kind of shuttled into products or different type of training methods or uh nutrition uh, and they've done this with somatotypes and they've mm -hmm. done kind of generalizations that people sort of identify and relate with with. And so it's like, uh, you know, something that kind of seems like it's logical, but th again, th these are so generalized that there's no way you can be like that accurate when you're predicting these. Well, things. there's so many variables, right? There's so many variables with that, but I will, you know, I, in my experience, I, I would say that a majority of my clients that had big wrist, big ankles, big bones, basically is what you're big boned. Uh, had an had an easier time building muscle, but a harder time burning body fat. And the same is true on the other end, right? So my clients that had really small wrists, really small ankles, tend to have a harder time building muscle, but had an easier time burning fat. Mm -hmm. Now, there's always an exception to the rule on both, both sides of that. There's many other variables that trump that, like your testosterone talk, your discipline. How about your behaviors and discipline too? How about somebody who doesn't have as much potential to build muscle, so they had to build more work ethic and discipline around nutrition. And because of that, they have a better lifestyle and habits and now see more results. So right. there's, there's always something to counter that argument. But generally speaking, and it's a total overgeneralization, I do think that most of my clients that were, that had, that were big boned had a harder time burning body fat than like our my quote unquote ectomorph mm. type of, of clients. Yeah, and then you also have uh, you know the whole, the question about measurements. What are good measurements? I mean, do you care what the tape measure says, or do you care about how you look? Like a really lean sixteen inch arm on a guy is impre natural, right? Is impressive to most people. Most people, if you saw a man with a lean muscular sixteen inch arm, that would look more impressive. Than a guy with an 18 inch arm whose body fat is, you know, 18% body fat, right? Well, it just doesn't look as good. So that's one of those things as well. Now, I can't answer and say, you know, what would be considered like really muscular lean for most. And this is just from my experience of reading, you know, for years and years about lifters and this and that. For men, you know, if you're natural and you get your arms up to 17 or 18 inches, that's a and lean, relatively lean. That's a big ass uh, arm. That's a very big arm. 
natural. The, the 20 inchers that usually comes from super genetics and, and anabolic steroids. But again, I mean, it's so different from person to person. And getting lean, I've done this. I've lost 15 pounds, worked out, and everybody comes up to me and says, oh my gosh, how did you gain so much muscle? And the, I didn't. The difference is I look like I gained a bunch of muscle because I'm so well, much leaner. Exactly. Each each pose uh, the pros and cons, right? So each side has it. Like if you're if you have a bigger bone, you may your arms may naturally look bigger or put on muscle easier. But like so, I, I mean, my wrist and ankles are like a 13 year old girl. So I have like these tiny little petite freaking wrists and and and, and they're ankles. dainty, it's dainty mm -hmm. ankles, right? Mm -hmm. Now the benefit of that though is like when all the years of building muscle and working towards that, and then when I get on physique, it when I was competing. Man, it looked way more pronounced. I have this tiny little waist because that's my bone structure. I have a very small waist. I have tiny wrists. So the muscle that I did put on it looks more pronounced because it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's more exaggerated than the guy that had the boxier square waist and the thicker wrist and the thick. He may even have more muscle, but when you look at it and we present it on stage, I look better for those reasons. So you know they all have they all have their pros and cons. Yeah, I think I think uh, getting hung up on. You know, is it easier for me or harder for me, or is it better to have this or that? Eh, yeah. You, know? you know, the old there was an old uh, body. This is like from back in the day. I'd say in the nineteen. This is probably the nineteen thirties. Uh, they, they they there was a standard for balance that they used, and they used to say that your arm. And they actually used to do this to see if their body was balanced. Your arm, your neck, and your calf measurement need to be the same. If your arm, neck, and calf measurement are the same. Then you back to those standards back then. You are balanced. You have a balanced physique. <laughs> yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah.